in both in terms of the measure of center and spread. A random variable is a variable whose value depends on the outcome of a random experiment. That's the summation of each outcome, lowercase x, times its respective probability, p of x. Multiply those together, add them up. That's the expected value for our random variable. Now, if we have an average, outcome. That's given by the standard deviation. This is the Greek letter, lowercase Standard deviation is the difference from the average. So right here in this formula, I have each outcome Now sometimes we're above the mean Sometimes we're below the mean. So wouldn't sometimes this difference be negative? Mm -hmm. I want to accumulate variability. I want to talk about the total variation from center. If some of them are positive and some of them are negative, and I add them up, now this portion of my formula, x minus mu quantity squared, that's the variability. But it's not the variability of the entire distribution because this random variable probability that this variation has for our experiment it takes the total variability times the chance that that's the variability for our random variable. Take the variation times the probability. Take square roots and we'll have our answer. So all told, the standard deviation of our random variable, capital F, I've got a couple experiments on the board. Let's go ahead and make a probability distribution and use that to find both the expected value, the average outcome, and it says this, three cards are selected from a deck, one at a time without replacement, and the number of clubs is recorded. could I potentially have zero to three. three. I could have anywhere between zero and three clubs. So if I let capital X by random variable denote the number of clubs in my hand, the values that that random variable could take on are anywhere between zero and three. Let's make a distribution table where I figure out what the probability that each of these outcome occurs by. I get zero clubs. How many clubs? How many cards in deck aren't clubs? Thirty-nine out of two. Two. Now I select without replacement, so it's thirty-eight out of fifty-one, and thirty-seven out of fifty. It doesn't so much matter now because this can only happen one way. I also need to multiply by the combinatoric that tells me how many ways there are to select zero clubs for any three cards in my hand. 
So let's multiply times re choose zero. How many ways can this event occur for the three cards in my hand? How many ways are there to choose zero cards from my three cards in the hand and make them close? So up on Desmos, let's take 39 out of 52, 38 out of 51, 37 out of 50. Times the number of ways that this can occur. Point four one three five approximately. The probability of this event times the number of ways it can happen. How many ways are there to have zero cards be clubs in a hand of three cards? So three choose zero. Roman Waldorf, please report to the secondary office. Roman Waldorf, report to the secondary office. Okay, the next row down. I need one club. There are 13 clubs on the 52 cards in the deck. Times, what about the other two cards? Things being. They're not clubs though, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then 38 out of 50. What's the combinatoric? How many different cards could be clubs? I could get the club on the first card, or the second card, or the third card. How many ways can this given event happen? I need to multiply times that combinatoric of three choose one. If you leave off that combinatoric, you're only telling part of the story. Because couldn't any one of these three cards have been the one club that I got in the, in the hand? Mm -hmm. So I have to multiply times three, choose one, because that's the number of ways that this given event can happen. So we had 13 out of 52 times 39 out of 51 and 38 out of 50 times the combinatoric three, choose one. And I got four, three, five, nine. It's actually more likely that I get one club than no clubs. It's kind of weird. I can get one club more ways than no clubs. So it's actually more likely to get no club or get one club than no clubs. See, what is the probability of getting two of the three cards clubs or all three of the cards being clubs? So two cards, 13 out of 52, times 12 out of 51, times 39 out of 50 for the last card not being clubs. Times what combinatoric? Three choose two. Three choose two, because couldn't any two of the three cards have been clubs? Mm -hmm. Either this two, this two, or these two? All right, so 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51 times 39 out of 50 times 3 choose 2. We got 1376, 0 0.1376. The last one would be all three clubs. Club, club, and club. 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51 times 11 out of 50 times the number of ways that I can have three cards all be clubs. Three, choose three. One two nine. 
All right, I have my distribution table put together. Questions so far? Okay, let's work through the expected or average number of clubs in my three card hand and the variability in that average for the number of clubs in my three card hand. The expected number of clubs says to just take each outcome, the number of clubs, times its respective probability, and add them together. If I stick that, let's go down below here. I got a little bit more room. Down below. The average number of clubs is zero times 0.4135 plus one times 0.4359 two times 1376 plus three times 0.0129. All right, so I'm not going to do this number. That doesn't matter because it's just zero. I need one times this number plus two times this number plus three times this number. If I just copy and paste it down below. Reading lunch? So I get about point about point seven five. The average number of clubs is point seven five, which in big sense is in a quarter of the deck of clubs. So if I have three cards, three times a fourth means three quarters of my cards should have been clubs. All right, now what is the variability? in that value? What is the standard deviation in that average? deviation is going to be the square root of the summation of the variation x minus mu squared times p of x. So let's put these products together first. How far away is zero clubs, this outcome, from the average? Let's find that difference. X minus the average, zero minus 0 0.75 squared. That represents the total variability, the total difference from the average, 41.35% of the time. So I have to take that variability times the probability that, that was the variability in that scenario. The same thing for the other outcomes. What is the difference from one club with the average number of clubs? Square it to find the variation. I have to square it because sometimes I'm below average, sometimes above average. If I want to accumulate total variability, I have to have them all be the same sign. Times the probability that this is the variation for our experiment, 0.4359. Two minus 0.75 squared times 0.1376. Three minus 0.75 over the average squared times the probability that that is the total variation for our experiment, 0.0129. So right now in my formula, all I've done 
is set up these products. The variability times the probability that was the variability in our experiment. Now I need to add them together and take square roots. How much below average is zero clubs? What's the difference between zero and 0 0.75? Negative. Negative 0.75. So I'm going to type in negative 0 0.75 squared times that probability, which was 0.4135. Plus, how much above average is one club? What's one minus 0.75? I got a quarter more clubs than I would have thought. So let's do plus 0 0.25 squared times the probability that that was our variation, 0 0.4359. Plus the other two. Two minus 0.75 is one and a quarter more clubs than I would have thought. So plus 1.25 squared, 0.1376. The last one. That would be two and a quarter more clubs if I got all three cards being clubs than I would have thought. Times that probability 0.0129. All right, so I get 0 0.5401. The standard deviation of our random variable is now going to be the square root of that last decimal, 0 0.5401. So pick the square root. The standard deviation is the square root of the variation. So if I take square roots, I get 0 0.7349. We would expect 0 0.75 of the cards to be clubs or deviate from that average by about 0 0.7349 clubs. Let's try the second one. Do the same thing. We'll make a distribution table for the random variable and then calculate the expected outcome and the standard deviation. How are we feeling so far? Anybody have any issues with what's going on so far? It's just a lot of number crunching. Okay. Here's a situation, our experiment for scenario number two. You play two games of checkers against the same opponent. The chance that you win the first game is 60%. If you do win the first game, the chance that you win the second is 20%. If you do lose the first game, the probability of winning the second game is 30%. What's the random variable? The number of games won. Let's let capital X be the games won. How many games could have been won? Four, zero, four, one. So I could have any number of outcomes between zero and two. Let's find for our distribution table what the probability would have been for winning these number of games. Winning zero games, winning one of the two games, or winning both games. Now I just used decks of cards with ratios here for our first experiment. How could I diagram this experiment, this scenario? We did this back in standard 13 on conditional probability. How could I outline 
what's happening or diagram what's happening. There was a question on your quiz on Friday about cement from suppliers A and B. That was almost the same scenario. Talking about undamaged and damaged bags of cement. Oh, thinking like the tree. Like a tree diagram. So what happens first? You play the first game. Game number one. Could either win or lose. I win the first game 60% of the time. What's the chance I lose the first game? 40%. Now, after having either won or lost the first game, you're going to play another. So, from each node, we're going to draw another decision. Another branch here, game number two. I could win or lose after having won the first, as well as win or lose after having lost the first game. If you win the first game, the chance that you win the second is 20%. So after having won the first game, I have a 20% chance of winning the second. I'll put a 0 0.2 on top. If you lose the first game, the chance of winning the second game is 30%. So after having lost the first game, the chance of winning the second, I do a little bit better. I want to get at least one. If I win the second after having won the first 20% of the time, I'm going to lose the second game 80% of the time. This would be 30%, so 70% here. Okay, here's the table, or here's the diagram. What do I do with these pairs of numbers? I want to find what proportion of games where I won both. What do I do with 0.6 and 0.2, for example? I want to win this first game and win the second game. So that's 60% of the time times 20% of the time. 60% times 20%, 12%. I win both games 12% of the time, and that's going to go right here. I win the first game, lose the second game. 60% times 80% is 48%. Can lose the first game and then win the second game. That's 40% times 30% or 12%. So what's the total probability of winning one game? I can win the first, lose the second, or I could lose the first and win the second and still have won one game in total. 60. Why? Isaac, why? Do you add them together? Add them together. It could be either this outcome or this outcome. So in total, that's 60%. Now losing them both, that's 40% and 70% or 28% in total. Obviously, what do all three of these numbers have to add up to? Same as these four numbers over here in our card scenario. Is that mind? One or 100%, right? 28 and 60 make 88%, plus another 12% makes 100%. That sounds right. All right. I'm going to just erase this because we're done using it. Because I've used it to make the table that I need to find the expected number of games won and the standard deviation in that average. So the expected number of games won. Take the summation of each outcome times its probability. So 0 times 0 0.28. 1 times 1 
plus one times 0 0.6 plus two times was that 12%. Let's see, so this is going to be zero plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.24 or 0 0.84. I should win every time I play two games against this opponent, 0.84 games. Let's find the standard deviation. Let's figure out the squared differences from the mean, the total variability. Zero is one outcome. How far away is zero from the average, since we're talking about difference from the mean? Take zero minus 0 0.84 squared. Now that's the total variability. What percent of the time? 28%. So I got to multiply that times 28%. I win one game, what's the difference from the average for this part of our experiment, for this situation? So take one minus 0 0.84 squared. That's the total variability, 60% of the time. Now two, what if I win both games? The total variability is two minus the average of 0 0.84. All right, we gotta do some number crunching on a calculator now. All right, zero minus 0 0.84 would be negative 0 0.84 squared times that probability of 28%. One minus 0 0.84 is 0.16. Two percent of the time. That's the variability. And then two minus 0 0.84 is 1.16 more games won than I would have thought. So 1.16 squared times 12 percent. 3744. Last thing I have to do is what to that number? Square root. Square root. So standard deviation of the random variable gains one is the square root of 0 I'd be expected to win about 0.84 games or differ from that expected amount by about 0.0612 games. You guys able to follow along online okay? Anything I can help you with? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Why don't you go ahead and, why don't you go ahead and pull out your laptops and we're going to get a question loaded up from Schoology on your practice problems because I haven't gotten into those with you yet here for this standard. So let me show you where those are found. I'm going to get you started on some of the practice for our, our standard.